What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Triple Play Fantasy YouTube channel. And in a video that's long overdue, I know it's craziness and there's so much going on, but we had to make sure we got this out there to you guys. It's a quarterback carousel going on. There's a lot of free agency moves happening. Quarterback madness, right? We see Carson Wentz going to the Commanders. We see Aaron Rodgers staying with the Packers on the biggest deal for a player in NFL history in terms of per year salary. And then we've got Russell Wilson and a blockbuster trade to the Denver Broncos. But honestly, what does it all mean for each quarterback? And then more importantly, what does it mean for their fantasy values and fantasy values of players on their team that they're going to throw the ball to? Let's start first with Aaron Rodgers, who returns to Green Bay. He's going to be a Packer for life at this point, it seems like. And let's take a look at his options and what it means for his value. So fantasy impact, I think, ultimately, is Aaron Rodgers is firmly going to remain a top five to seven quarterback. You obviously have the Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, potentially Kyler Murray, Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert are the only ones potentially I think you could put above him at this point. So at worst, he's maybe number seven. But again, I could make a case that he could be in the top five. Aaron Jones, you would expect is still going to be an RB1, even if he's a back end RB1. A.J. Dillon will be a solid flex play as he was most of this season. I don't think that's going to change too much. Devontae Adams is going to be the overall wide receiver one or overall wide receiver two in fantasy, not not a wide receiver, re re two, <laughs> a wide receiver, the wide receiver two. So he'll either be the one or two I would expect going to get a massive target share, you know, about probably, you know, close to like 28 to 30 percent target share. I wouldn't be shocked anywhere in that range. And then ultimately, I would expect the Packers to bring in one or two wide receivers to join him. You obviously have MVS as a free agent. Lazard's not expected to be back there. You have Amari Rogers, who is a very young, inexperienced player. I don't think you can count on as a number two. So don't be surprised if the Green Bay Packers, I've been saying this for a while, I think they're going to go and they're going to draft a wide receiver for the first time since Javon Walker in the first round. I think they could get a David Bell or, you know, potentially a George Pickens or Chris Olave. Those are the types of guys I could potentially see them targeting in the back end of the first round if they fall to them and, and them pairing with Devontae Adams for a good one-two combo. Let's take a look next at the big blockbuster trade that went down. Russell Wilson traded to the Denver Broncos, and ultimately now the Broncos are Super Bowl contenders, not just playoff contenders. They're Super Bowl contenders. They have a great defense. They've got good wide receivers, obviously a great young running back in Javante Williams. This is a team ready to win right now. So what does this ultimately mean for the, the Denver Broncos? You see Russell Wilson's value, I expect to say somewhat the same. You can see nice spelling mistake on my part. It's something I should always look at maybe before you upload videos, but that's okay. We're truthful and we're real here. So Russell Wilson's value stays the same. I wouldn't expect it to go too much up or down. You had, he had DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett in Seattle. He's got Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton here good run games in both plays. I think he ultimately, I know people are saying he's going to cook more, but I think ultimately he is going to be somebody that's going to be a, a top 10 quarterback for fantasy, but maybe not a top three, four, five quarterback. Like many are hoping that he could be. So I think again, a QB one, but not somebody that I would expect is going to be a league winner for you. Jerry, Judy and Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick all become viable fantasy options. And I think Judy and Sutton become firm wide receiver twos last year. Those guys were being drafted as most likely low end twos and flex plays just because of the quarterback situation that they were in. But I think these guys, I think Jerry Judy is going to go somewhere in the back end of round three, early round four. And I think Cortland Sutton goes somewhere in the, the back end of round four to round five. And I think they're going to be really good wide receiver twos for your Tim Patrick. I think is going to be a good flex play and all of them again, should be very fancy viable for you. And Albert O he's going to be somebody that now with the trade of Noah Fant to Seattle, is going to become a back end tight end one. I think anywhere from the tight end eight to tight end 12 range is somewhere where you could expect that he'll settle in at. Uh, he's again, you would look at kind of how Gerald Everett was last year from weeks 12 to 16. He was the number seven overall tight end. I think that's kind of what the upside you could expect at best for Albert O. And I think he settles in somewhere again in that eight to 12 range. Ultimately, somewhat you can have on your team and you could trust if you decide to punt the position and wait till the end of your draft to make sure you take one. Let's look at the last big free agency move for quarterback position. Carson Wentz traded to the commanders. He's going from the Colts over to Washington. And I guess it's, you could arguably say this is the best quarterback in Washington, potentially since 
they had Kirk Cousins, which again is just with the amount of turnover they've had there. Dwayne Haskins, Alex Smith, Taylor Heineke, obviously Fitzpatrick was supposed to play there, never really got a chance to with injuries. The, it goes just goes on and on and on. So what does that mean with Carson Wentz there? Carson Wentz does get a downgrade because he's going from one of the best offensive lines in the league in Indianapolis and one of the a decent wide receiving core. Obviously, Michael Pittman's there, even though T.Y. Hilton's kind of on his last leg. He had a couple tight ends that he could throw to. And uh, again, not a great necessarily receiving core, but one that I thought might be a little bit more of an upgrade from what he has in Washington. And I think he's a QB2 at best. I don't think he's someone you're taking in the top 12, maybe even to top 13, 14, 15. I think he's going to some, settle somewhere into that maybe 15 to 17, 18 range. I think that's what they're going to kind of expect from him. They're going to be a running and defensive team. And he's somebody that I don't think is going to be asked to win games for them. So he's a QB two. The one thing that you will note if you do have Antonio Gibson is he does throw to his running backs. If you look last year, Indianapolis ranked eighth at 22.6 target set up percentage to their running backs and Washington ranked fifth at 24%. So it shouldn't be a huge drop off in terms of how much running backs get involved in this offense with a new quarterback under center. So I do think that Antonio Gibson hopefully can get more receptions this year. Obviously if McKissick is there, you know, he's going to do his thing, but that's not a detriment to the running backs. And I do think the running game is still going to be emphasized here. And Terry McLaurin ultimately could be in, should be in line for the best season of his career. Because we've talked about the bad quarterbacks. We already touched on who he's had throwing him the ball. Not saying Carson Wentz is a world beater by any means. But he is, as sad as it sounds, the best quarterback that Terry McLaurin has ever had. And I do think that he'll get the ball to McLaurin early and often. And at least get it to him somewhat accurately where McLaurin can make some plays after the catch. And again, this is somewhere where I think now Terry McLaurin settles in as a very high-end wide receiver too. Somewhere I, I would put him in 13, 14, 15 wide receiver off the board right outside that wide receiver one range. And again, I don't think it would shock anybody if he did sneak into the back and wide receiver one range, if his target share continues to stay where it does with a better quarterback guys, that's pretty much it for right now. There's going to be so much free agency movement coming in the next couple of days, but I wanted to make sure we hit on the big stuff that happened just now from the offensive side of the ball, from the quarterbacks, fantasy aspects for each team, what it means for their playmakers. So we'll be back with plenty more of these videos, I'm sure, over the next week, breaking down the big free agency movements and madness that is going to go on. And if you guys have any thoughts or questions about certain players or where they're going and what it means for others, make sure you let us know below, and we'll make sure we touch on those in future videos. And for everybody that's not subscribed, please make sure that you are subscribed. We have about 70 to 80% of our viewership as people that are not subscribed to the channel. So please, every single time you click subscribe, it helps support us. Like and subscribing every time you click a video, making sure you leave a comment means a lot for us. So great, greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for checking out another video on the Triple Play Fantasy YouTube channel. And until the next one, we'll catch you guys soon.